going to try and give you uh, guys um, <coughs> an overview on uh, what's going on in the Australian funding landscape because that's very interesting at the moment. Uh, Australia has a well-performing health system as you can see here and uh, is comparable to uh, Sweden and other leading nations and of course uh, interesting for me to make some comparisons with the Swedish situation currently and the Australian landscape. And interestingly, I'm, I'm a part of the joint Swedish-Australian initiative led by the Swedish ambassador in Canberra, Per Orberg. So we are really trying to uh, develop the linkages between the two countries. And uh, doing so, we operate at different level and, and we invest a lot of time in comparisons as well. But uh, it's a very good healthcare system, but it's it's not sustainable. I mean, we have a uh, situation in Australia as in, in other industrialized countries with a, with a growing, rapidly growing uh, health expenditure, expenditure, which of course is very unsustainable. So what, what does the, the politicians and the people in Australia, what are they currently doing? Yeah, they turn to researchers and they want to ask researchers for help to uh, combat this situation. And, and as we can see and heard of, the very good example around clot retrieval. A couple of big international trials, very rapid turnover and implementation into healthcare. And you see it's broadly implemented now in Sweden. We are rolling it out in Australia and we have the potential to save a lot of money. So I mean, it's the right thing to do, to turn to researchers and embed researchers into the healthcare system and and uh, the interest the bipartisan interest in Australia has been to understand and to support uh, translational research at the higher level implementation and real world impact so that's a big focus not only on the traditional excellence measurements like nature and science and all but real time and real world impact and it's about measurement understanding of what impact really is so two uh, state and federal uh, reviews uh, they were recently presented and they have guided the directions in Australian healthcare and, and, and medical research uh, the, in, in the landscape there now for a while. And, and as I will come back to very soon, it has also led to some substantial uh, investments. So Australia as a research nation is doing very, very well. And there have been some major reviews over the time that has increased the funding to the National Health and Medical Research Council, the equivalent to the Swedish VR, and uh, which <coughs> over 10, 15 years that paid off big time in, in the traditional areas of, of research. I will come back to that very soon. Uh, but the McKeon review, the federal review around health and medical research for the future, they, it talks about implementation, it talks about translational research, and it talks about team effort, team spirit, spirit and breaking down the silos in the system. Uh, for the benefit uh, of the population and outcome, also for business, clearly articulated business is a part of this. So delivery through partnerships is, is key to that uh, strategy. So researchers, health professionals and the communities work together to create a healthy and wealthy Australia with sort of a grand vision about the best health system in the world. So currently, if we just for a second look at the current investment in health and medical research, we can see that about six, million, six billion dollars uh, from different areas, different sectors of, of Australian uh, medical research landscape sort of coming in each year. And if you brought it up to all research, it's between 10 and 11. Uh, billion dollars and billion uh, uh, Aussie dollar is 6.2 I believe now Swedish kroner just to give you an example so we are tracking sort of in the in the middle of the EU spectrum Sweden is doing better this is from a recent uh, um, uh, report from uh, uh, European and uh, and OECD, uh, OECD and and you see Sweden is tracking better still at a high level compared to Australia, um, but 
if you look for bang for the buck, uh, I think uh, several uh, studies have shown that Australia is punching well above its weight, both when it comes to citation, particularly the research coming out from the medical research institutes in Australia, with, you see here, uh, average cit citation of 25 compared to the universities and other sectors and, and a contribution in the sort of in the excellent sector and big journals uh, very well uh, represented uh, overall. Um, so the Australian research landscape is attractive and, and we have had a net influx of researchers into the Australian system for quite a while now through the, the, this different periods and including the GFC, while Sweden unfortunately hasn't had that situation. It's uh, been a net, it's like net efflux of, of uh, high performing individuals and researchers out of the Swedish system. And of course that's not good for Sweden as a research nation in the long term and I, I sincerely <coughs> hope that we can change and be on the left side of this diagram in the in near future not doing so well when it comes to generally speaking around international collaboration and international partnership around uh, inventions we can do a lot better in australia and that's one of the core uh, reasons for investment in the australian system at the moment we can do a lot better when it comes to interactions with industry entrepreneurship and uh, and uh, that arm of translational research, the business arm, is heavily promoted now in, in Australia. And of course there are different drivers, as I said, the increasing costs for healthcare, you can see the, the sort of part of GDP in, in Australia, uh, it is a totally unsustainable situation. And also in Australia we're facing a changed industrial landscape, very dependent on minerals, coals, etc. at the moment. And uh, that's a potential risk to the Australian society. So there is now uh, drivers of policy change in Australia. One, more back for the buck, more outcome. Are we investing in the right things? Um, they want more healthcare outcome, better healthcare, improved healthcare policy, uh, and Evidence suggests simply that the, the, the knowledge transfer through the translation of pipeline is not optimal at the moment. So um, that has led to certain consequences and um, it's a clear message to the research council that they need to focus more on translational research, must facilitate and demonstrate research translation and impact. And again, back to this uh, slide about partnerships and working together. So just recently, the, the Turnbull government launched the National Innovations in, in Science Agenda uh, with, a, with a clear goal of promotion of translation through better engagement with end users and measurement of impact. That's coming back over and over again, measurement of impact of research. So uh, there is now a biomedical translation fund that you can go in if you're a medical researcher, look for opportunities and support in the entrepreneurial sector as well. It's 1.2 billion allocated to this initiative. And uh, we want to look for impact beyond the academic achievement, as I said. Uh, we want to understand implementation processes and uh, create the right incentives for, for the researchers to stay and also to develop research in Australia. The other very big, big thing that uh, again is resting on a bipartisan agreement is the Medical Research Future Fund. And uh, it passed uh, the government just a few months ago and it's an endowment fund uh, that will grow up to 20 billion Australian dollars in five to six years time, already four billion dollars in the system and it will contribute 
with about one billion dollar per year, meaning doubling of the research support in the Australian landscape, focusing on translational research, better healthcare, and and business. So um, having this strong research platform and underperforming in products and opportunities in the entrepreneurial business and, and uh, um, um, spin-off field is now on everyone's lips and it has really changed and, and um, totally transformed the Australian discussion and landscapes. And universities will have their infrastructure support uh, based on, on these uh, principles in the future as well. So it, it's serious business and, and the government is very serious. So uh, the institute uh, as such we have uh, responded for a while now uh, so we, on, on the, these new areas and on, on the demand in this field and we developed a system which we call framework to assess impact from translation and health research, we label it FATE. And uh, it's a system that is developed by our health economist. It's a modified uh, return of investment model and social uh, determinant uh, system uh, that we will implement prospectively. So researchers coming up with new projects, they have to think about delivery and outcome and potential impact from their research program. And that is a, a bit of a novel way to think for researchers who normally only define and say, oh, my research may have impact in this field for the future. So what this actually is doing is helping researchers to articulate and to push them in a direction where they think about impact and outcome. And uh, our model here has rendered us quite a, a bit of, of attention from federal authorities and state authorities. And we apply them to our research program uh, within the institute as well now. So um, the, the three fundamental pillars uh, under FATE umbrella is metrics, it's a modified payback model, uh, it's a social return on investment, and it's also based on case studies. So it's a combination of these three areas which make it possible for us to understand impact and, and uh, uh, where the research is going in the translation of wheel, the spinning wheel. So um, uh, we have a couple of Centre for Research Excellences. We have Department of Defence in Australia. We have Department of Industry and Science, Department of Health. They're all now using this model that we have developed to be implemented uh, either in as a, a single entity or in combination with other mm, models and opportunities to measure outcome. So. Um, Again, to summarize, a changing uh, funding landscape, strong focus on translational research, strong focus on outcome, and a response from the Australian government where they inject quite a bit of money. They're doubling the support for research in the Australian landscape. And sitting in Australia, of course, that Asia is next door neighbors to us. We are present very much in Asia, and I tell you, if Sweden in the long term uh, will survive, we've got to step up, as you suggest, Anna, the research funding, uh, because I was in China last uh, two weeks ago, and every time you go there, you become both worried and very, very impressed about what they're doing. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you.